Hi everybody! Thanks so much for coming to the Art Life YouTube channel today. Please make sure that you like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Today I'm going to be helping you to create a self-portrait. That's right, I'm going to show you step by step how to draw a realistic face, have a go at drawing some facial features all in proportion as well as add some colour with watercolours later. So come along with me, I'll show you how to do this right now. I love it. The materials you're going to need for this drawing task, well, firstly, is something to draw with and something to draw on. We're going to be painting with a watercolour palette, so I always suggest to use watercolour paper. If you don't have watercolour paper, you can just always use some paper that's maybe a little bit thicker than uh, normal paper, but this paper can absorb a lot more water and I find that it ends up being a much neater result. So I'm just working on A4 watercolour paper. You'll need a Sharpie or some sort of permanent marker to draw with later, a grey lead and some watercolour painting materials. <laughs> get yourself set up and we'll get started. Yeah. Now we're going to have a go at drawing a simple self-portrait. Do you remember what a self-portrait is, Sadie? Yes. What is it? It's a picture of yourself. Fantastic. So we're drawing a picture of ourselves and what we look like. Now, believe it or not, when we draw ourselves, so many people draw a circle for a head, some dots for eyes, and a line for a smile. But do I look like that? No. I don't I think I look not. like that. Do I look like that? No, I don't. So we're going to have a go at drawing a little bit more of a realistic face the way we actually look as best we can. And the first mistake, as I said, was a circle for our face. Believe it or not, we actually, most of us have different shaped faces, but majority of us have kind of like an oval face, almost like an upside down egg face. So when drawing our self-portrait, we would like it to take up majority of our page. That means the I'm just, yeah, the whole thing. We're just doing our face, our neck and our shoulders. We're not doing our whole body today. If you're wanting to have a go at learning how to draw a whole body, Sadie and I did another self-portrait tutorial about a year back and you can have a look at that if you like. But this one is a focus on facial features. And so... When we're drawing, the first thing you need to learn, and something I talk about a lot in my videos, is sketching. Sketching yeah. is very different to drawing. This is a drawing of a square. I pressed pretty hard, I did it pretty quickly, I didn't really take my time. A sketch is different. I'm doing tiny little light lines, and I'm doing it slowly so that I can concentrate on what I'm doing and, make and it the oh, right shape. Yeah, and if I make a mistake, I've drawn it lightly enough that I can rub it out without ruining my artwork. So you can see that's the difference between drawing and sketching. And sketching today is what we are after. So I would like you just to practice your sketching by sketching your name on the back of your piece of paper, just to practice. That means lightly, little lines, writing your name really carefully. It definitely takes longer, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I'll be done by now if I was drawing. Yeah. I'll just go like... But it's good practice. So now we're going to have a go at drawing our nice big head. And I'm going to start... <laughs> I'm going to start down here. I'm going to draw a little line. Okay. Yeah, and then I'm going to draw a little line at the top of my page here. I wanted to draw that so you guys can see approximately how big we're going to have a go at drawing today. So now I'm going to start at the top here and I'm going to sketch a bit of an upside down egg shape with my face coming down, ending at this little line. So bring it all the way down and then up again. This being 
the chin. Notice I'm sketching. Are you? Yes. Good. Wonderful. Hopefully you can all see that. That looks just like your face. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's the idea. That's okay. While Sadie's finishing her face there, what I'm actually going to get you to do is draw a couple of little lines in this face. These lines we're going to rub out later. These are called indication lines. What that means is it indicates to you or shows you where you should draw things. Now, believe it or not, when we're drawing our eyes, which is the next thing we're going to have a go at, our eyes are actually pretty much in the middle of our head. A lot of people would draw eyes at the top of our head because it, I guess it's the first thing on our face. But our forehead and our hair take up the majority of this spot here. So we're going to draw our eyes kind of in the middle here. So that's why I'd like you to find approximately the middle of your face and draw a very or sketch a very light indication line there for you. Then I want you to think of the bottom half of your face and draw an indication line about halfway again. Okay, remember draw these lightly because we're gonna get rid of them. Okay. Then in the bottom part, we're gonna break that in half again. There, so you should have three lines on your face, one in the middle, one in the middle of the bottom section there, and then one in the middle of the bottom section there. <laughs> this is going to be your eyes, the bottom of your nose and your mouth. Now, before we do anything on our face, we're actually going to draw our ears first. Our ears actually start about where our eyes are and they come down to where our nose starts. So these lines can help us to know when to draw, where to draw our ears. Now, I don't have ears like a big elephant. They don't need to come out like this. They actually just need to be a tiny little... Circle, half circle. Sort of, yeah, almost look like a sausage. Yeah. One on that side and one on that side. And again, they're going to be at the top of our eyes and then the bottom of our nose there. Now, if you like, I'd like you to imagine the middle of your face. I'm going to draw a line. If you think that's going to help you too, you can draw an indication line directly down the middle of your um, face as well. We're going to have a go at drawing our eyes now on these lines here, one on this side and one on this side. Now our eyes, as I said, a lot of people use dots. Sometimes people do an oval with a circle in it, but our eyes actually kind of look a little bit like a football. They are arched on the top and arched on the bottom. And this is actually a really tricky shape to draw. If you'd like to practice on the back, you can, but I have a bit of a cheat. Okay, we're going to start here and I'm going to draw a nice arch like that. Now the hard part's getting it about the same size. I find when I'm teaching, kids can draw the top one, but the bottom one is the hard bit for some reason. So I suggest flipping your page upside down and just doing that shape again. So you are drawing four kind of rainbowy arches to create two eyes. Too big. Now, if you have a look closely at your eye, you have an eyelid and that comes above your eye, just like this. So I'm gonna draw that shape again. That's six times I've drawn this arch shape. And trust me, that shape's really hard to do. I've been drawing faces for a very long time, which is why I might make it look a little bit easy. As I said, practice on the back if you're having trouble. We have a big circle that takes up almost the entire eye here. And then we have an, a pupil, which is another smaller circle on the inside. Circles are tricky. Again, notice I'm sketching because if I've made a mistake, I can rub it, rub out, it really. out. I always like to do a littler circle here because it shows a bit of reflection of light. You can see here, this is my basic eyes. A few other details which you might choose to add is we've got a little tear duct there. We also have eyelashes, whether you're a boy or a girl, everyone 
has eyelashes, believe it or not. And they oh. come out the top of our eyelid like Can this. You say something, please? Sure. Normally when people are drawing someone, if they're drawing a girl, they do eyelashes. If they're drawing a boy, they don't. That's true, but we all have eyelashes, don't we? So please make sure you draw some eyelashes for yourself. There's some little tiny eyelashes that come down the bottom here. Yep. Like that. Cool. Now, another thing that a lot of people forget when it comes to drawing their eyes is something very important on the top of our eyes, and that is our eyebrows. eyebrows. And then so, eyebrows? No, well, we need to. You can draw or sketch a line that again is kind of like an arch and then you can kind of fill it in with some hair yeah lots of arches i know but if we forget these details we might look a little bit funny yeah. because everyone has these all right how are our eyes looking good good wait let me see it fast it's awesome mom <laughs> Thank you. Looks a bit weird. <laughs> Looks a bit weird at the moment. Right. What I'm trying to teach you is where things are within the face and I guess just basic proportion um, and facial features, what they look you like. like mine? I think yours is fantastic. Let's have a look at Sadie's. So far she's having a go at drawing hers as well. Looking fantastic, Sadie. Well done. Try to put yours in the shot so everyone can see, hey? Yeah. Do you think? You can do that. All right. Next we're going to move on to the nose. Now, this line here indicates the bottom of the nose and a nose is probably the hardest facial feature to draw and a lot of people draw lots of different things for noses some people draw triangles some people just draw sort of an l shape like that but i again i'm going to teach you step by step how to do a nose down the bottom here we're just going to draw a circle i say draw but i actually mean sketch sketch a circle okay the, at the bottom of this line, in the middle here, we're going to draw a circle. All right, a fairly big circle, and this is going to be the tip of your nose. Tip. All right, on That's the side so of your nose. It looks like a clown nose. <laughs> <laughs> it does, but I'm not finished. <laughs> on the side of our noses, we have two nostrils. They kind of come out, kind of. They look a little bit like our ears. Yep. Trust me, trust me. It will all make sense. These are out. That's my nostril there. <coughs> <laughs> and that's my nostril there and then the side of my nose comes up toward my eye can you see that yeah that's what I is that better does it look like yeah, a better but, nose yeah but you might want to rub out that circle. yes <laughs> i'm going to rub out the circle never you mind i'm going to keep a little bit of the circle just to sort of show the shape of my nose there but you can see there well, that is pretty much so my nose. You guys can look in a mirror to get a little bit more of an accurate yeah, that's what I'm doing drawing of that. your <laughs> nose, what it might look like. I actually have a nose ring, so I yeah. probably need to put that one in, don't I? Bing, bing. <laughs> that's something about me. That I don't. Is, um, no, you do not have a nose ring. You will not have a nose ring. <laughs> that's a bit hypocritical of me, isn't it? <laughs> Saying I'm a loud one, but you're not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, I hope you went okay with your nose. It is tricky, so just take your time with it. And remember, sketching helps because you can rub out everything. All right. For our mouth. Now, the middle of our mouth is meant to go sort of on this line. So we're going to work just a little bit above. And I'm just going to do a tiny little, tiny little U shape. Can you see that? Don't worry, it's not my full mouth. That's just the top of my lip. All right, then I'm going to bring it down on either side. Everyone's mouth looks a little bit different, but this, I'm just sort of showing you a generic mouth. All right, then we have a big bottom lip that comes down like this, and then a line in the middle, which sort of separates our top lip and our bottom lip. Now, if you want to make yourself smiling, you can sort of make this lip come up a bit so it's more of a smile. But um, I don't normally draw myself or anyone else with teeth because 
it's extremely difficult. So whenever what? we're doing How? this, How uh, I'm, this is sort of just self portraits for beginners. That might be sort of a bit more of an advanced step. Um, if you would like to draw a mouth smiling with teeth, you might need to um, so look up a different video for that. All right, so now, oh, it's raining. <laughs> I wonder if I can be heard still. Yeah. All right, when it comes to our neck, a lot of people draw necks too small, like here and here, but we're, we're not a lollipop. Our neck actually sort of comes from near our ears and it comes down and it comes, yeah, and it comes from behind our ears there and comes down like that. And then shoulders come out sort of straight like that. Cool. And I need to put some clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, you got some clothes on. All right, now onto the hair. At this point, we're gonna do the hair. Now, believe it or not, the hair doesn't just stick up from the top of our head. Our hair comes down the front here. Even if you have you wear your hair back, your hair sort of starts here and then comes around to the side of your ears like that so depending on your hairstyle will depend obviously um you know where your hair falls i normally wear my hair in a middle part so that's what i will do you could do a few bits of hair you know in the front of your face and coming down and then the rest of the hair sort of coming behind your ears and then coming up a little bit higher as well if you and so i'd sort of put my hair Coming down like that and you could either have it in front of your shoulders or behind now obviously if you have a shorter hairstyle um, it's a little bit different you would probably just draw the hair at the front here and then maybe even a little bit on top so I don't like to draw each individual strand like this because that takes forever I've more so just drawn my hair as the whole body of it if that makes sense cool so this is my basic self-portrait what do you think awesome right. awesome okay wonderful so now the important part because we're adding color with watercolors you need to use a permanent marker it needs to be a waterproof or fade proof ink um sharpies are great although they're normally a little bit thick you can use that but you're gonna have trouble getting detail these ones, this is a uni pen. I get these from Zart Art. It's a fine liner, which means you can get all the details that you want in, like every little eyelash, um, without you know losing any of the details. So what I'm going to do now is go over everything I want to keep. I don't want to keep these lines. I'm going to rub them out. I don't have. I don't walk around with lines up and down my face. Do you, Sadie? No. <laughs> I don't either. So I'm going to not draw over those. I'm just going to draw over everything I want to keep. Before I do that, though, I think what's important is considering what you look like, your details. For example, I have a nose ring, so that's why I've add, added that in. I often wear quite big earrings, so I might add that in for myself. Um... If you have freckles, you might draw some freckles. I have a few freckles. I have, I a have few, lots of freckles. I have a couple of moles there that um, are on my face. Sadie has freckles. freckles. She'll draw some beautiful freckles on her face. So personalize your picture to make it look like you, not just like anybody walking around the street. So I'm going to spend some time now carefully going over my lines. You might choose to still sketch if you prefer the look of that. Otherwise, you could be really careful to draw these lines, but obviously take your time because you cannot rub out these ones. You cannot rub out a permanent marker, can you? You have to try to make sure these lines are as careful as you can. having a chat with my daughter about sketching her work is looking fantastic but she's starting to draw she's starting to draw really dark which means it's going to be really difficult once she's once she's done everything in fine liner to get rid of all the pencil mark so please try to remember for the entirety of the task to sketch yeah. So 
hopefully it makes sense about my hair. You notice I didn't draw each individual strand of my hair and that is because I'm going to paint it with watercolors now. So now that I've done everything in my fine liner that I want to keep, I can rub out my sketch lines. Hopefully it's nice and easy to rub them out, making sure that your ink has dried before you do that um, so that we don't get smudges and so that we can get rid of everything we don't need. <gasps> it's incredible! Wow! Look at Sadie's work. You are such a fantastic drawer, honey. Don't forget to colour in the pupils of your eye. They're the black bits here. And time to rub out. Look at my glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Let's pretend I'm wearing contacts. <laughs> left to do is to show you how to add colour to your beautiful self-portrait. Obviously you can use whatever you like but today I'm going to be using a watercolour palette just to add a bit of really light colour to make this even more realistic. Now the key with painting something so detailed is having an array of different size brushes to use especially ones that are quite small like this one so that you can get into the small details without making a mess. start with my skin and just paint directly over my work I want to try to work with the area while the paint is wet so that the colors kind of blend in together you can just see I'm painting quite lightly my skin color here Watching along you may have noticed that I keep swapping the size brushes depending on the area that I'm painting there's no point in painting a large area like the hair or the face in such a small brush because it will look fairly messy and it will take forever so that's where a larger brush is more effective whereas when I'm doing little details like the colors of my eyes the lips and my clothing details here, right now I'm about to do my little tiny earrings, I've swapped to a smaller brush so that I can work neater and keep the paint where I want it to stay. What do you think, Delilah? Yeah. Now obviously when it comes to painting the background, you can choose to put yourself wherever you want to be. Um, or just use a nice plain colour. I'm going to use a nice fluoro sort of background to go with my earrings. Um, but I'm just going to make sure this edge is nice and neat before using a bigger brush. You might notice when I'm painting the background, I'm also using multiple colours all at once so that they blend together. And it just looks that little bit more interesting and dynamic because it's not just one flat colour. So it's as simple as that. Please make sure that you comment below if you really enjoy the video and feel free to check me out on Instagram at artlife.melb. That's a place that you can get in contact with me and also send me photos and I might be able to feature you online. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time.